Yo, this is Dumsani and you're on Elevated Life where we elevate your thinking to elevate your life. So today we're gonna to be talking to Erwin Linder from Luna Digital. This guy, their business has been doing big numbers during the Corona crisis. So if you want to know how the heck that happened, stay tuned. Hey, this is Tumsani. You are on Elevated Life, where we elevate your thinking to elevate your life. Look, um, Corona hit the world by stone, okay? There's a lot of business people out there that were talking about how to be successful, but they did not make it. And some of their businesses had to close. And so us here at Elevated Life, we wanted to interview some business people who are actually making it even through the corona crisis okay some of these business people have had businesses that have been successful throughout the corona crisis and throughout the lockdown one of which is sitting right here with me erwin linda the head of performance at luna digital how you doing very well thanks brother i appreciate you inviting me out today and uh that that intro was pretty dope as well oh, <laughs> i do you. appreciate it thank but you. we're well man we're well um enjoying today um things things are, are pretty busy lately uh -huh. you know by the grace of god we, we'll be able to say that and yeah. we're very grateful man yeah but, yeah uh, thanks for inviting me out today appreciate that no it's a pleasure it's a pleasure so i've been watching you guys like the stuff that you've been doing for clients and things like that uh, online and the thing is what i loved about your business by the way for the listeners that are listening over here is that these guys have been helping their clients to be making more money like during the corona crisis during the lockdown i mean how does that feel <laughs> yeah, well um i think to attest to what the experience was for them is it was crazy uh, right. it's definitely something they didn't expect okay no great okay so i said some brief stuff about you in the intro okay so for the listeners and the people that are viewing for those that don't know you can you just please quickly introduce yourself tell them yeah. who you are what what you're about yeah sure um well obviously the name's Erwin. yeah <laughs> uh one of the co-founders of luna digital and also head of performance um back at the office which just means that uh, i head up all of the campaigns for majority of our larger clients mm -hmm. and also manage a, a small team of performance marketers mm -hmm. now what we do is and and uh, what i've been really passionate about is uh the paid media space and we, we've right. really helped uh, you know brands from a local point of view that are sort of at the medium um, size we could really call it mm -hmm. really dominate the game and, right. and help them really produce a lot of online orders through through their websites and their e-commerce and their online shops right now um, we we do focus majority of our paid media efforts and our expertise in the e-commerce space mm -hmm. and uh, we've been alive for probably the last two years and Luna Digital is still a baby I mean she's two years <laughs> old yeah wow that's awesome still a baby but a very very strong baby <laughs> yeah no she does a couple yeah. of push-ups you know yeah, we, we work yeah. out quite a bit <laughs> right okay so one of the things that we also wanted to do was we wanted to actually get your journey as a business person as an entrepreneur you know because there's a lot of people out there that think that hey one day you woke up and boom you were successful hey now is that the case it couldn't be further from the truth bro. <laughs> right <laughs> i wish it was the case um from from our side uh, it's a very interesting story and um Nanga, who's who's the co-founder as well, along with me, mm -hmm. would tell you the same thing. It was uh, as if it had to happen, and we we mm -hmm. always say this. It's a very you know um, esoteric thing to say, mm -hmm. but it's just because of the energy that we've had, our experiences, and how we have built the business up until now yeah. that it's it's made sense for us. Now, from our side, I come from a sales background completely, right. uh -huh. and I think that's really served us as a business in this space uh -huh. because we're not focused on fluff either we're, we're focused on you know um revenue generating marketing activities we started back in 2018 um i was selling instagram growth hacking services so you know where you'd you'd pay you'd pay like a software ten dollars a month uh -huh. to uh you know get get you apparently followers and likes and build your right, audience right, sort of right. i was selling that very wow. dodge i didn't enjoy what i was doing wow. i'm not telling i'm proud of that but yeah. um i'm glad i i did that because i met nanga through that uh -huh. i was on uh literally and this is no joke we we're on the same whatsapp group of uh, uh -huh. this guy that was trying to build a company out of selling these services to people locally mm -hmm. and uh I was on my own journey of trying to start my own agency, running Facebook ads for local businesses. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Nunga was in the same space. He literally just quit his job um, for working at a different agency back in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And uh, he saw what I was doing. I was posting a lot of stuff on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, he saw I was working in the same space. And uh, mm -hmm. he literally just called me mm -hmm. and said, hey, look, dude, uh, let's merge our journeys. 
mm. see where it takes us. This is the vision. And let's see if we, if we can make something happen out of this. Wow. And we, I've never seen him before in my entire life face to face. Wow. We, that day, which is in November 2018, uh-huh. we virtually shook hands and started our own business. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's amazing. Thanks, you know, And I, I can see you guys definitely have a, a chemistry as a team. Absolutely, yeah. No, we, 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 we do have that for now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we are all humans. So, and that's something that I do respect from him a lot, where we know we are actually so different mm-hmm. that it complements our relationship. Right. I'm, I'm on the one spectrum of the world. He is, he's on the other uh-huh. side. And due to the fact that we're so different, we, we bring different perspectives to the game. Right. And that's helped us really, uh, you know, have an objective viewpoint of what to do and how to help brands because mm-hmm. I have one viewpoint of how it, it, it would work from my experience and what I think actually works and mm-hmm. he then gives me the counter to that mm-hmm. and that really helps I, yeah. I would say honestly um, you know us grow as a team grow yeah. as a company our clients grow yes. and also grow professionally really yeah. So, yeah. yeah and then it's awesome for your company as well because then you have an awesome company culture going on as well yeah completely uh, yeah. For, for us it's, it really is all about growth and yeah. we we in inside of our organization refer to everyone as team members so mm-hmm. we we want it to be a very creative space yeah. where if you jump on board we want you to be able to say and it's a very pressurized uh, a place as well where mm-hmm. we want you to be able to say that while working at Luna digital we were able to do our best work mm-hmm. where, where you're, yeah. you're working to your fullest potential right you are working to perform at the highest level you can. Right. You're working to build your own resume and your own professional skills to the point that you can say that you're an expert in what you do in your own domain. Yes. So that's that. That's what we really advocate for, what we encourage and what we motivate people to do if they uh, do work with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one of the things that I love about uh, what you're speaking about is you guys are all about results. Results, results, results. So it's not yeah. about fluff, <laughs> it's about results, okay? So I'm gonna ask you questions about that later on, but right now, there's some people out there that are thinking, like, ah, you know, you never, you've never made mistakes. I mean, you, you, you met this business partner of yours. You guys just started a business, and now your business is doing well. Now, can you tell us one of the failures that you've had um, in your life, like where you like really smashed your head in, you know, and um, and it really got you down and out? Because a lot of people are down and out right now. And then also the process that you took to actually get out of that. Sure thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I believe it was in the in the growing pains uh, of, of our business that we faced a lot of challenges and and Dumisani, I, I would be ignorant to say that there was one defining moment mm-hmm. the, it was an accumulation of a lot of different challenges that we faced mm-hmm. that really helped us uh, fine-tune our business model and what we were really good at mm-hmm. is uh, and, and I didn't say this previously we started our agency as a full service digital marketing agency mm-hmm. where we, we would do video production, we'd do content creation, we'd run your ads for you, we'd build the website for you, we'll do email marketing, we'll do Facebook mm-hmm. chatbots, mm-hmm. we'll do everything. Right. You know, <laughs> I guess, and uh, I guess everyone starts out that way. Yeah. Uh, when, up until you find your zone of genius. Right. And, and that's where we found Facebook advertising and mm-hmm. Google advertising as mm-hmm. our domain of expertise. Right. So we, we, f- we, we found a lot of our challenges early in the days in clients and, uh, you know, in our practice clients. We worked initially for clients for free in the beginning to build up experience first right. yes. so that we have the confidence, yeah. honestly, to then go and charge for our services. Because mm-hmm. in, in the beginning stages, we didn't have confidence to charge for what we're doing. Um, well, I didn't. I know Nanga did. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, we wanted to find, you know, make sure that if we're going to go and sell to someone, what we do, we're confident in our abilities to actually deliver. And that it, yes. just comes from an integrity point of view. We never mm-hmm. wanted to sell something that we didn't believe in. So mm-hmm. we had to test the model. Okay. And it took, it really took some time. It took us at least about six months to find out what the market was hungry for, number one. Right. And number two, what we could realistically deliver mm-hmm. as a packaged service. Okay. Yeah. So okay. It, it took us about six months to get there. Bashed our heads in a lot with different clients, clients that didn't fit, clients that did fit that we messed up. And then those those clients that stuck with us since that day are, are, are with us now. We have about five clients from the beginning phase of Luna Digital that are still with us. So they 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 know the story, they know the background, they know where, where we come from. Yeah. And 
uh, it's nice for them, and this is something also for the viewers that are just starting, it's nice for businesses to grow with other businesses. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah, have to be the big fish to always get the clients. Yeah. Rather be transparent in, in terms of where you are now and sell the vision of your company to your potential clients. Mm -hmm. Because then they also understand, you know, where is your business going? Yes. Are you a fly by night? Are you a one night stand? Are you a drop box business? Drop the box and run away and never see them again? Yeah. <laughs> People want to know that, yeah. and and that's that's as as a business owner, it's it's something that that we that we really learned. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of business lessons um, we learned in the first year, and we thought we were okay. We're doing quite well. We're building a lot of momentum. Had a lot of clients mm -hmm. in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and then COVID hit. Hey. And yeah, that, that 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 was a different storm hey. on, on on its own. Right. Yeah, man. Right. Okay. Yeah. So now going into that, when COVID hit, because I know. Uh, myself, I was really shook by a lot of companies um, that were like closing. Uh, when I found out about what what was happening with Edgar's, when I was finding find out what was happening with uh, companies like um, Burger King, these big companies, and then here we are running a digital agency ourselves, you know, and it really scared me as a business person. I have to admit, I was really scared. It really shook me. You know, and I was wondering what is going to happen with us, what's going to happen with our company and things like that. So what was your experience when COVID hit and um, and all this was happening in the lockdown? How did it feel for you? How did you take it? Um, from a new business point of view, everything died out, shriveled up and ran away. Mm -hmm. There was no new business. So uh, I would say definitely the economy contracted. Uh, all the deals we had in the pipeline had to literally uh, be paused and said, well, look, we, we, we're here in a survival mode. Mm. We can't mm -hmm. thrive right now yeah. because there are so many restrictions from a governmental point of view. We can't operate. Mm. And mm. thankfully, and I say, I say this, we were lucky that we were in the online and e-commerce space. Right. We pivoted, remember, a year ago to the online and e-commerce space. Uh -huh. And we were lucky for the fact that we were in that sector because... It was sort of a watershed moment for all the guys in e-commerce where yeah. they couldn't physically open their, their, their stores. So they mm, had to sell yes. some way. They had to keep cash flow going and they had to make sure that they're paying the employees somehow. Mm -hmm. And we found ourselves right in the center of that. Mm. So mm. We, we were able to, with our current client portfolio, really provide massive results because mm. people were contracting. A lot of the bigger brands and the bigger players weren't pumping in ad spend into the platforms that we, mm. were, that yeah. we were spending in. True. So it made CP PM's cheaper. So yeah. we were getting a lot of underpriced attention for the brands that we that we managed to convince you still keep spending and investing into these platforms uh -huh. for. Mm -hmm. Now those guys that did are wreaking the benefits still today. Right. Where they have disproportionately grew their email list, their client base, and their order volumes uh -huh. through that time. Because wow. it was the only channel to really sell from. Yes, yes. So in other words, like a lot of people, I mean, ads became cheaper because a lot of people were not buying the ads anymore. Absolutely. So then you guys took advantage of that, and now some of your clients are still reaping the benefits to this day. To this day, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So now, in terms of, tell us how uh, that process now, in terms of now, COVID hits, a lot of the clients say, you know, turn you away and things like that. Because mm. uh, I, can, I can totally relate to that because we do uh, video production and things like that. So next thing, we're supposed to be filming for conferences and this and that and then next thing boom like there's a lockdown <laughs> and then yeah. business goes and and, and tries up like uh, like that now how did that feel like tell us th the the process in terms of clients are saying no clients are turning you away and then you guys because of the way that you pivoted now you're starting to get clients some results and things like that how did that feel uh it, it was phenomenal really i think um before before it felt phenomenal and, and, and we were in a good space it was mm. very scary and i think everyone can say the same thing where yeah. you have so much uncertainty of what's going to happen you need to take a leadership role mm. and make sure that you, you're surviving through this point and uh, you, you're putting food on people's plates yeah. and that's what we really took pride out of once we started really providing results for our clients is the fact that we know then without us being able to do this for them they would have been in a completely different position mm. people yes. might have not you know, you wouldn't have gotten paid. We would, yes. would be families without food. Yeah, and and yeah. that's what drove us through that point mm -hmm. was being able to provide value upfront, first of all. Yeah. And that's why we really believe in results and nothing else. Uh, and results being said, revenue. Results being said, online mm -hmm. orders. Results mm -hmm. being said, leads and clients. Yes. Uh -huh. Not fluff, not video views. We love saying that, you know, video views and email open rates won't pay your payroll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it's, true. It's a fact, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Really, to attest to that, 
it was scary in the beginning, but as, as a team collectively, at least we have really strong people in, in our organization who really stepped up and or all of us communicated to our clients, this is the situation, this is the decision that we have made as a company, and this mm-hmm. is what we motivate you to do mm-hmm. as the domain experts during this time. Yes. And we gave them that decision. 40% of the people didn't agree with us and they contracted mm-hmm. and they didn't take advantage of this time and uh, the, the, well, what they could have gotten. Mm-hmm. And 60% did. Mm-hmm. Those that stayed on, yeah, 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 did, and those were the guys that are still reaping the benefits to today. And we love telling that story over and over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, that's great. That's great. Yeah, what I, what I was excited about, by the way, is uh, like I said, in terms of you guys giving your clients results, then obviously they get more revenue. Then, how awesome is this? You guys actually help people keep jobs, you know, during this time as well. So yeah. I mean, just by mm-hmm. serving. Just by you know going through the, the the challenges that you went through, the failures that you went through, and then by learning all those lessons, it led you to a place where you can actually keep jobs for people. That is really awesome. So now, one of the things I wanted to ask as well, some of the people out there that are that are watching this are your regular people. You know, just a regular person out there that maybe got retrenched, maybe had to close down their company and things like that. What tips do you have for them in terms of how do they get out of this you know maybe they got into this ditch of the COVID-19 lockdown you know how do they get out of this ditch what what advice would you have for them I wish I had an easy answer for that Mm -hmm. but really it's a new economic world that we're living in right now Mm -hmm. and if if you were part of the majority of people that couldn't keep their job maybe right now would be a good time as as an employee, not an entrepreneur, to reevaluate your skill set mm-hmm. and see what's valuable in the marketplace today mm-hmm. that you can utilize and offer to companies. Mm-hmm. If you can get a skill set that is in demand right now, mm-hmm. that's honestly what you should be looking at. Yes. Skills pay the bills at the end of the day. Right. So honestly, if you if you were working in construction and you, you were retrenched because projects dried up completely and you couldn't work. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd look at reinventing that career path that you were looking for mm-hmm. and maybe looking into something more along the lines of the new economic world and do some research, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wish I had an easier answer for you, but right. as an entrepreneur as well, look at what the market is hungry for. Yep. Look at what's working right now and project right. also, look into the future, have the foresight to be able to see what's going to be working five to 10 years from now mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. rely on legacy businesses. Yes. That's why I am an advocate for online because mm-hmm. I can see uh, retail and commerce only growing in that space. Yeah. And yeah. from a yeah. social media standpoint, it's only going to get bigger and broader and your skill sets are going to have to improve and you're going to have to understand how to sell on that level from a social side of things mm-hmm. much more than from a brick and mortar point of view. Right. So then from a real estate side of things, I mean, the guys, the guys selling the, the, big, the big offices, the guys selling the big retail space for, you know, Edco's and Edco, and I'm sure you know the story yes. of what happened there prior. It's, 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 it's hemorrhaging money. And mm-hmm. why would you as an entrepreneur stay in a dying business model? Right. Yes. <laughs> that's 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 a good question. It, it is, and and it's a very hard truth to swallow, Dimi Sani. Yeah. You know, and I know for a lot of people, it's not it's not an easy thing. And I wish I had an easy answer. And I'm saying this a lot because I myself wish I had an easy answer for for our business. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's really to grow through these tough economic times that we're currently as in a local economy in in a recession. Mm-hmm. You've got to master the mundane. Mm-hmm. It's those small things. Yeah. Those small, small the me getting yeah. to the meetings on time. Making sure the reports are there, making sure that your KPIs are met. Because if you have that integrity and people are hitting, you are hitting those sort of goals for your clients yeah. or for your company. Yeah. Yet again, though, you are a valuable asset. Yes. And that's what the market is really missing. And that's how you differentiate yourself. Right. That's how you keep your job. Yes. Not by being average. Uh-huh. That's the last thing nice. you want to be. Yeah, I love what you said. Skills pay the bills because a lot of people out there have been retrenched or something like that and they, st- they have to learn a new skill to lift themselves out of what they are in. So I can totally relate to that because there was a company that I was working for in 2017. That company got liquidated. We arrived the one morning and literally that morning, I remember that Monday morning and uh, it was in January and um, my wife who had... Uh, she, by the way, was unfairly, yeah, it was constructive dismissal um, at the job that she was at. It was very, very bad. Wow. And so she didn't have a job. Next thing, I'm like, we were like, okay, cool, at least I still have a job. Like, yeah, I still have a job, at least. 
then I get there that Monday morning, and then um, what happens is they're like, no, guys, we can't pay you. We have to liquidate the company. And the company was liquidated. I literally had no... I went that morning to the office having a job to coming home <laughs> to tell my wife that I don't have a job. <laughs> wow. And I remember that time that, um, you know, I was really thinking about it, and, and something inside of me just said, hey, listen learn a certain skill i learned that certain skill and that certain skill got me to start the business that we're running today look at that then yeah that that's crazy so um i really believe in that thing skills pay the bills think about what skill can you learn out there in terms of for example if you're in c construction let's say you are very very good how about you actually shoot some youtube videos in terms of how to do certain things you know that could actually become a business how where you are actually teaching people online how to do certain things you know Look maybe that, you, absolutely yeah, yeah maybe you can sew maybe you can do online sewing courses things like that i'm just you know speaking about ideas you know yeah, because at this point it's it's a very profitable business model because you're mm. selling your knowledge and that knowledge you could turn into an asset mm -hmm. which is something you build once and you sell that to more than one person mm-hmm so then you can leverage that knowledge, that asset you've built, sell that to yeah. multiple people, fine tune it after feedback and build a business out of that. Yeah. And this is something that's very controversial, but I always say, I feel personally, it's a lot riskier to go and work for an organization mm -hmm. and have less control mm -hmm. than being in business for yourself. Right. Because yet, yet again, everyone has a different risk profile. Yeah. But in my opinion, working for another company where you're at the mercy of their cash flow, mm -hmm. you have no idea how that works, you have no idea how mm. to improve that, yes. you don't have any say or control in terms of how you can maneuver it around yeah. to keep the business alive. Yeah. You can though when you're an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. yet again, if you have a cash flow problem, what can you do? You can go get another client. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, one of the things that we spoke about is the fact that um, the journey that you went through. Now there's a lot of people out there that it, they don't know what to do. You know, they don't know their skills. You know, if I'm, if I'm retrenched, or maybe I'm a student, maybe there's a student out there that's watching who doesn't know what their next move is and things like that. Can you tell us in terms of the, the journey that you took in terms of finding the skill set that you have? Because obviously, like, now when you're in school, you want to do this, and you want to do that, and you want to do this, and you want to do that. Or, like, you were working for a certain company, and you just want to sit there. Mm. You know, like, in terms of the, how did... Uh, Please take us through the process in terms of the skill set that you s finally chose what you're currently doing today. Okay, sure thing. Because I think, you know, what we're doing right now is something that um, I've been doing for the longest time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been the industry that I've been working in for, for the longest time since I've, I've started working. Mm. And I'll take you back to day one, and that's me studying. Um, I got my N6 diploma in uh, mechanical drawings at mm -hmm. a college. Mm -hmm. And then I, I got placed a job immediately the year after that. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's the normal journey that everyone thinks is the one you should take because that's the one your parents tell you is the safest and the best route yeah. for you <laughs> to grow professionally, uh -huh. right? And uh -huh. I got to the point where I was working in, in uh, a mechanical engineering firm. Um, they work with plastics. Very niche organization was in a very good position. There are very few of them that do what they do locally in mm. south africa so yeah. it was a very good place to work from you had yes. a lot of good pluses you know it ticked all the boxes you could say mm -hmm. and after four months of working there i, I got so depressed ah. i couldn't wake up to go to work on ah. mondays mm. I, I i was riding the train of tgif thank god it's friday right and i got to a point where i, I didn't understand that this is how it's supposed to work and you're supposed to enjoy it yeah i didn't enjoy any single moment of that ah. and it got me to the point where I, I finally understood myself more and knowing that I enjoyed what I was doing, mm -hmm. but not who I was working with. Right. And who I was doing it for. Wow. So the whole professional landscape didn't appeal to me at all. But wow. the technical work right. was something I enjoyed. Right. So then I pivoted and said, well, look, um, if I, if I want to be in control of my own finances and uh, really have more control on my future, mm -hmm. it would definitely depend on me building my own business. And this was when I was about 19, 20. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, look, I need skill sets. <laughs> I mm -hmm. need skills to be able to mm -hmm. make this mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I turned to was sales. 
mm-hmm. because you need to be able to sell of course in order to build a business mm-hmm. whether that be you whether that be a sales department whether that be somebody else you're outsourcing you need to have that skill to be able to have a certain proficiency level to either make decisions of other people are doing it well mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. or you're gonna have to do that in in the beginning and i'll definitely advise you to do it in in the beginning for yourself right so that you can acquire that skill for the rest of your life because yeah. that will serve you yeah Yes. Hands down, yes. more than anything else will do in your life. Mm-hmm. Now, I went into sales. I, uh, I started in a network marketing um, company. Right. Uh, that that didn't work out. Right. <laughs> none, right. <laughs> yeah, nonetheless, though, it didn't deter me. And through that process, one of my friends, longest friends that I've ever had, uh, phoned me and uh, he said, well, look, um, he's, he's working for a security company uh-huh. and he, he needs another salesperson in, in, in the department uh-huh. alongside with him to be able to you know, fulfill that position. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool, great. So Let's jump in. Can I just uh, clarify, is this the friend that you met through the network marketing? What no, whatever? no, I knew my, my friend Sheldon. Uh, I've, I've known for mm, majority of my life already. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So this is just a friend. Childhood okay. friend. Childhood friend. A, a, child, a childhood friend. So a childhood friend then calls you to this business? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He calls me up. Uh, I say, well, look, at this point, there's no other opportunities on my table. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to take this. I need a job. I need the money. I need to be able to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Took the job. Um, they, they immediately onboarded me as a junior salesperson. Mm-hmm. And this was tr- as traditional sales can get in today's environment. Right. I had to walk up and down the streets of a, a busy business, um, you know, industrial complex uh-huh. knock on doors and introduce <laughs> myself and speak and speak to the owner or speak to you know right, the md or right. speak to the general manager yes. and find out what are they doing from a security point of view and either yes. sell them on armed response uh-huh. sell them electric fencing sell them on um, uh, uh, alarm systems and uh-huh. what have you everything in from the security point of view yes. and then through that i met my first mentor mel mm-hmm. mel Tinsilana, and he owned his own business on top of working as a sales manager mm-hmm. for the security company. Mm-hmm. And he saw some potential in me and Sheldon that uh, w- would have been better used um, selling his services as opposed to where we were working there. Right. So we, we made the shift from working at the security company and uh, we, we started working with Mel mm. at, at his marketing organization, mm-hmm. selling bulk SMS services. Right. You know those SMSs you <laughs> get from Discovery Health and uh, Roman's Pizza or Debonair's sometimes, right, right. telling you about the specials for the weekend uh-huh. on a Tuesday <laughs> or that sort of thing. Right. We were selling those services to businesses. Uh-huh. And that's where I developed my sales skills. Right. That's where I sharpened my focus. And that's where I got introduced to the entrepreneurial landscape mm-hmm. and the self-development uh, well, realm, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. Where Mel was very big on that. He had a lot of tapes from Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, all yeah. of the OGs, yeah, you know, man. Tony Robbins. Yeah, and, <laughs> that's, and that's really where we got exposed to that. And, that's, yeah. and that really helped me elevate myself from where I was and change my reality. I right. saw the other side of the coin for the first time in my life, and that right. was what I was searching for. Sure. When we got to that point, um, you know, we, we were very good friends, and mm-hmm. we worked at, uh, at uh, the company that we were building together. We, mm-hmm. we, we transformed the business from doing 100,000 Rand um, a month to about 500,000 Rand a month in Yo. about a year, a year and a half. Yo. And, you know, it's nice, it's nice to say that, but unfortunately, it's, it, it wasn't profitable. You know, we, we were making a lot of revenue. We were, mm-hmm. we were getting a lot of sales through, but the business model just didn't work. Right. And, you know, it soured some relationships. And at the end of the day, we, we decided to preserve those relationships. Mm-hmm. We would have to split. Right. And then I ventured back into the corporate world. Mm-hmm. But still with the same mentality and the same reality that I had where I knew I had to build my own business. Right. There at the company where I was working for, I was an entrepreneur. I was working on a business, some, someone else's business and growing that. Now yeah. I felt like I was ready. Right. Uh, I had I had the background to be able to uh, do this now. Right. And uh, I was working in a sales job. While I got there, I did my probation. I don't recommend anyone do this. I worked my probation, didn't work on anything but the business, mm-hmm. their business. And then after the probation was finished, I started working on my own projects. Yeah. And I started looking at the opportunities and the things that I could be doing right now. Research, looking at what trends are working right now. Uh, uh, what uh, are the most profitable businesses to start yes, in yes. the current economy? Yes. And that's when I started to see that you know a lot of people are selling products mm. that aren't theirs even yes yeah where, whereby you would put 
or build up a, a brand essentially online mm. and sell physical products to people across the world, which yeah. is the drop shipping model. Yeah. I, got, I got into that first and foremost. That's the first thing that I did uh -huh. because the barrier to entry was so low. But then uh -huh. again, though, I wasn't at the revenue level from a personal point of view to mm -hmm. be able to sustain that. So yeah. I said, okay, cool. What are the skills? Again, going back to the skills, what are the yeah. skills that I need to be able to make that work? Yeah. And I saw that the biggest channel that people were selling on was Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then a light bulb hit. I'm right. like, okay, cool. What can we do around this? And then I started seeing the Ty Lopez videos on Facebook, <laughs> people yeah. selling courses, yeah. finding Billie Jean, or all these influences in that realm across the border in the States. Yeah. And that's where it really inspired me to really do a lot more research in that space. Mm. And uh, that's, that's how we started then the journey from Luna Digital. Yeah. Really started from there then. Wow. Okay. So now there's a lot that you dropped over there. That is so much value. Okay. The fact that you had a mentor, that mentor actually helped you to change your mindset. Mm, completely. You know? So that, you know, so for the listeners out there, that's the importance of mentorship. That's exactly the importance of mentorship. A mentor can actually help you think a higher way. Mm. Like mm. in terms of thinking of ways that you've, you never, stuff that you never even thought before. You know, they can actually open your eyes to other worlds that you never thought existed. 100%. You know, so that's, mm. that's the importance of men mentorship. But something else that I also want you guys to see from uh, what Erwin just said is the fact that you are a person that seeks. That's what I, that, that's what, that's what I noticed. Mm. Like, there's a lot of people out there that are sitting in certain jobs, certain jobs that you're not enjoying. You're just sitting there and you're just Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday. And like you said, thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. And you're doing nothing about it. You went and you actually upskilled yourself. You started learning certain things, being curious about certain things, which kept on leading you down to this path and that mm. path and this path and that path. And then eventually, all those skills that you picked up along the way led you to the place that you are today. Am I correct? 100%, yes, 100%. It's about lifting yourself out of your current situation. If you're not happy, you have the power to change that. Right. That's, that's what I firmly believe. It's all up to you at the end of the day. You're the only person that's gonna walk in your shoes. Other people can judge, but then again though, if you want to get out of your current situation, nobody's gonna change that for you, unfortunately. Yes, yes, so that's all about leadership. That's all about skills de development and things like that. So I wanna also encourage the people out there in terms of when it comes to that leadership, you know, uh, upskilling yourself and things like that, uh, a lot of companies were actually birthed from a crisis. You know, there's a lot of huge companies right now that were birthed from a crisis. What if you out there upskill yourself right now through this time, even through the hardship that you're going through? What if something, an idea sparks in you that can actually change this country, you know, that can actually change the financial status of your family, of the people around you and things like that? You know, so thanks for that. that that's really awesome. Okay, so in terms of online marketing, let's talk online marketing now. There's a lot of courses out there. There's a lot of courses. This person selling a course, that person selling a course. There's a lot of free courses that were given away during the crisis and things like that. Um, how do you determine which course is actually gonna work for you? Because some of the, some mm. people are actually just selling courses <laughs> to make money. So how do you determine the actual real deal versus the the course that's actually gonna help you? Um, I'm gonna take you back to what I did and what always helps me mm -hmm. is. I would look for authenticity, number one. Yeah. I look for authenticity and originality. Mm -hmm. Look at if someone is selling this course, how long have they been selling it for? Mm -hmm. How many reviews are there? Do your research, become your own FBI agent. Mm -hmm. you, know? you need to go and do your research about that. But personally, my point of view that I could give you today is um, I, I believe there's a lot of free content out there that, are, that is really at the same level at what a lot of courses online that individuals sell. Uh, or, or delivering at. Mm. So from my point of view, from a digital marketing side of things, I learned more from the School of Hard Knocks and uh, you know running my own ads and checking YouTube videos on how to do that mm -hmm. as opposed to what I did on other courses. But the yeah. best course to really look at if you're into the Facebook game is just do the Facebook blueprint mm. that Facebook offers mm -hmm. physically. That it, it comes wow. straight from the source. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Google also has that. They also have their own courses. Go straight to the source yeah. and look at what's working. Look at the people that are delivering massive results. Mm -hmm. Find those people. And once you find those people, then 
the results speak for themselves and I would back them that and I would buy their course if they had one. Wow. That's, that's, that's simple. Uh, I would not um, look at, and please don't fall trapped to this or pray to this, is the golden ticket syndrome, yes. which a lot of infopreneurs sell their courses on the premise of where mm. this course will solve everything for you. Yes. They, they sell you on, on each individual emotional trigger point that, that will make you buy or purchase it. Okay. And it's, it's, it's just psychologically smart for them to be able to do that because then they're building a business out of that. But yeah. yet again, though, just be cognitive that that's what they're doing. And be objective when you make those decisions. Right, right. I have fallen, tr- I, I have fallen prey to so many of those here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I spend yeah. so much money online. But like, you get this feeling like, look, this is the solution for me. You yeah. Know? And then you don't do your research. You go and you buy this course. Mm. Next thing, you know, yes, you even take action mm. on what they're teaching you. But some of the, those courses don't work. So now, also in terms of online marketing, what we want to know is, as well in terms of the structure because you, you you spoke about your business partner how you guys met and things like that now but now those people out there that maybe want to start a digital marketing company or, or whatever out there um, after this maybe they got retrenched or maybe this is a new part that they want to take what's the advice that you give in terms of the structure how do you have a structure of a digital marketing company that is supposed to run successfully sure I got explained this very early on before we started Luna Digital. And that's if you're in the digital marketing game, you're either selling one or two things. Mm-hmm. Number one, it will either be convenience mm-hmm. or number two, an opportunity. Yeah. Now we as Luna Digital, we fall into the opportunity spectrum mm-hmm. where we, we can help you scale your top line revenues exponentially mm-hmm. through running targeted Facebook ads through our own system that we've developed and, uh, and, and, and made successful. Or you could then go to the um, convenience side where you could offer social media management services, where you'd manage social pages, you'd create content, you'd produce that, you'd manage then the interaction of that and be sort of a content creator slash community manager as well. You know, there's a lot of uh, services you could offer, but really all of them really fall either into one or two categories, either an opportunity or a convenience. And if, you, if, if you're in the game of looking at high value clients, offer an opportunity first, because right. that's what people will pay more for. Right. If you offer a business or an individual an opportunity to make more from what they're currently doing or something that they haven't done previously, yeah. they'll pay you in exuberant amounts as opposed to you offering a convenience service yeah. because that they can then benchmark yeah to other people selling the same service, if you're with me. After the lockdown, after COVID, you know, people were working from home, some are working in their pajamas, some aren't even getting out of bed and things like that. And, you know, and a lot of bad habits get formed <laughs> through Absolutely. that time. So now in terms of you as an entrepreneur, what are the kind of habits that you have that are helping you to succeed, uh, succeed as an entrepreneur? As, as an entrepreneur and somebody that runs a company, I try and develop as many high performance habits that I can and I can fit inside my schedule. Mm-hmm. So number one for me is I love to beat the sun up. Mm-hmm. So I love waking up earlier than what the sun would rise. Mm-hmm. So that, that mentally puts me in a good position of saying, all right, you know, I'm committed to making today successful because yeah. I'm up before that sun, yeah. right? That's, that's one of them. And no, number two is just, um, complete self-development, making sure that yeah. I'm, I'm reading on yeah. topics and, and mm-hmm. upskilling my current skills to the next level. Yes. Making sure we're never standing still. We're continuously improving. Mm-hmm. We're making sure we're getting to the next point to grow the business and yeah. also from a personal point of view and interpersonal skills are also being developed. So right. I would read in the morning after I get up and I'll make sure that I'll either run in the morning just to get the blood flowing yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know physically getting myself ready for the day. Yeah. And then I'll take a cold shower. I do cold therapy as well. Uh-huh. So that's that's a big one also to keep my body, my body, um, I would say hardened for battle for that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's there, there's a lot of other benefits around that, you know, um, r- physically and uh, you know, for health reasons. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the benefits that, that I've seen. It, it really focuses me mm-hmm. and emotionally mm-hmm. keeps me quite stable. And then later onwards, I'll definitely go and gym then. At, at the end of the day so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really physical as well yes. if your body is is not healthy mm-hmm. it, it will reciprocate up top here yes and that's something that we've definitely seen the stronger you are physically the stronger you are mentally yes. vice versa if you want to ah. become strong mentally you need to become strong physically again right. so that's 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 one of them but i'm really into the educational space i'm um, even though 
uh, I, I don't have any degree or anything like that in the space mm -hmm. I'm currently working right now. Can we continuously read? We always encourage people mm -hmm. in our organization mm -hmm. as well, the people that we work with yes. and even our clients. We send them books on things that we've read. Wow. So we, we awesome. keep that continuous feedback loop and making sure that everyone in our circle is continuously improving. Yes, yes. That's, that's definitely, um, if, if there's one key takeaway out of a uh, high performance habit that, that, that I've developed um, that's helped me get to where I am right now is continuous improvement. Right. Never stopping. Right, right, right. So um, the smallest things that you learn can actually change your life. So upskill yourself, upskill yourself, upskill yourself all the time. You know? So I love how you, you, you actually mentioned the smallest things. So let's speak about the smallest things. The smallest things like showering in the morning. The smallest things like going out for a run. The smallest things like reading maybe two, three pages of, uh, of a book per day. Those are the type of stuff that can actually help you to come out of this COVID-19, this depressing time. You know, am I correct? Absolutely. You know, if, uh, if you are depressed, and I know this might be out of the scope of my field, but if, if, you, if you really are overwhelmed by apathy and, you've, and, and you really feel like you're in a bad situation over here, get, get physical. It's probably the best antidepressant out there. Mm. If you have any, mm. any physical ailments or disabilities, go and do that. Trust me. It'll yeah. put your, your head in a different space and you'll be able to see things and look at things a little bit differently. You have a lot of self-talk. Your dialogue mm. will change as well. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it, it really is about making sure that that you as a person yes. are in control of what you're thinking of at, yeah. at the end of the day. If if your thoughts are going to be around negativity, mm. your your life will will manifest more of that. Yes, and that's just one of my my pure beliefs. Yeah, and then one of the things that you also spoke about was the whole thing of your circle. Mm. You know, the fact that you I mean you're sharing nice like the books that you're reading and the things that you're learning with the circle that you're around. So in other words, the one of the Im really important things is your circle. Am I correct? The people that you definitely. hang around. Yes. No, Dumisani, definitely. We, we continuously challenge each other to, to seek that next version of each other. Yeah. We love each other a lot. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. we, love, we love each other exactly how we are. But then again, mm. we know what each individual person's potential is mm. and mm. that's why mm. we keep pushing each other to reach that potential yeah because we know what what that would mean for that person when they get there right the continuous improvement has helped a lot of people get out of a lot of spaces where where they were which they weren't able to uh, and that's uh, just uh. through associating with people that are either above your level or at your level yes. and making sure that you keep in touch with them yeah. and really look and dive into and this is what i did personally is uh you know before buying all the courses i was looking at individuals people right. that were where i wanted to be had mm -hmm. what i wanted mm -hmm. to have were doing what i wanted to do and that's what i focused on and that's what i did yeah. research on and that's what i try to find out and i uh, and i emanated what they were doing yeah. i try to do what they were doing and yeah. just yeah. really employ what they were doing not what they were saying because uh -huh. what you do uh -huh. <laughs> is, is more important in my mind than what a lot of people say. Say yes, yes. No, yeah. that's that, that's what I, I focused on, and this is that's what our team also does. Yeah, we we're actually now. Um, funny enough, we're talking about this. We have a seventy-five day challenge now that we're starting next week Monday between mm -hmm. our entire team at Luna. We'll we'll call it our own version of seventy-five hard. Andy Fasella has that. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll definitely motivate you to go and check that out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a challenge where you really build a lot of mental fortitude and mental toughness. Oh. That's 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 the premise on it, uh -huh. and that's what we as a team are going to be doing together. Yeah. As as you do that, you have some sort of camaraderie also, and 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 you're you're building those relationships between yourself yes. and and your team members and mm -hmm. not only you are you getting stronger, you can see the development in other people. Right. Recognizing that only helps everyone grow because it's a team sport at the end of the day especially yes. if you're in business yeah 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 i really love the fact that um what you guys are doing is not only are you growing yourselves as a team but you're also helping your clients grow not just and it sounds like not just financially by the way i mean if you're sharing awesome books with them and resources with them as well um so guys the kind of circle that you're hanging around with really really important okay Cool, great. So, I mean, you've given us so much value in this interview and we re really appreciate it. Uh, okay, one of the things I, I actually want to say before we end the show is this. Um, I really respect um, what you have been doing, you know, and uh, I just want to commend you for the fact that the way that you've been growing as an entrepreneur, uh, the way that you, you keep pushing um, and not settling, and I love this, and this is why we wanted to do this interview for uh, all the listeners out there is that here's a person who keeps pushing, keeps evolving, keeps 
seeking the next level, the next level, the next level. We really love the fact that you keep doing that and we just want to commend you for that and also encourage you to keep doing that with your team as well. And, uh, and also, like, I, I just love the fact that you're touching other people's lives as well and pushing other people as well, you know. So we want to say to the listeners out there, uh, also, keep growing, keep pushing yourself, keep evolving, keep watching who you're hanging around with and things like that. So I want to just give you respect for that. Man. Thanks very much to me, Sunny. I honestly appreciate that. No, it's Deeply, I do. No, it's a, yeah, it's a pleasure. So any last words that you want to say to our listeners? Don't be boring and don't be average. Those yeah. are the first two things that are going to put you out of business. Mm. Don't be boring, don't be average. <laughs> That's, that goes back to the continuous improvement. Thing, Absolutely. Where you keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. 100%. All right, and then also the last thing that we, we want to ask you as well is this. Uh, if people wanted to find out more about you, where, where do they go? Yeah, sure. Um, we, we've got a website for Luna Digital, which is lunadigital.co.za. And if you wanted to find me, I've got personal pages on Facebook and Instagram. And I've all, I'm also on YouTube sometimes. But uh, my handle <laughs> on Instagram is at Erwin Linda. Right. you can find me there okay cool and then what we will do is we will put all those on the description below the video all right so thank you so much for your time thank you for your time demi sunny i appreciate it all right hi this is owen linda from luna digital you're watching elevated life where we elevate your thinking to elevate your life mm-hmm.